Yosa Tori is the largest defence show in Europe for land systems, with over 1,500 companies in attendance. The main themes this year are a drive for exports, showcasing new technological developments and pushing new products in a climate of defence cuts. There's also a strong logistics presence, where the maintenance and upgrade of existing military equipment becomes more important to militaries, and businesses align themselves to offer more support and project management services. Furthermore, defence companies are highlighting the capabilities of their equipment and systems for the humanitarian and disaster relief market. In the vehicle sector, the major programme of concern is the upcoming decision by the Danish MOD on their choice of APC vehicle. The contenders include FFG, BAE Systems, Nexta and GDER ELS with tracked and wheeled offerings. Trials have been completed. Of the major announcements at the show, the highlights have been the partnership of Nexta and Avibras to offer Nexta's Caesar 155mm truck mounted artillery gun to the Brazilian market. Nexta is also displaying a modified version of the VBCI APC that offers more space for troops and improved mobility with rear wheel steering. Some high ranking British military personnel were also seen being briefed on the vehicle as it could be a contender for the UK's utility vehicle programme. ATK has received a contract from Jordan to equip one of their C295 aircraft with the M230 weapon, converting it into a gunship. This follows on from earlier work performed by ATK to put the weapon on two CN235 aircraft. And Rhine Metal were displaying their, pro their new prototype vehicle, the 4x4 Survivor R which is equipped for CBR in operations. They have a customer in mind for the launch of this vehicle and it fills a gap in the lighter end of their product portfolio. Additional highlights are the launch of an upgraded 8x8 Piranha vehicle known as the Th Piranha 3 Plus by GD ELS. This will offer increased payload capacity and the company has also released details of its ATTV and quad bike, which although are latecomers to this market, should prove to be competitive. Saab has improved its AT4 shoulder launched anti-tank weapon by offering extended range and high explosive rounds and the company is also expanding into the non-lethal technologies market by signing a partnership with NTL at the show. Talas has made its Hawkeye 4x4 vehicle available for the export market and Renault is also positioning its VAB Mark III for exports too. In addition, IMI has launched its own new 4x4 vehicle, the Combat Guard, at the exhibition and Iveco has presented the LAV4, the fourth generation of its 4x4 light multi-role vehicle which are being produced for Norway. On the training side, Patria has launched its new Nemo Mortar training system and Saab has announced it has secured a contract extension to continue providing training for British soldiers in Kenya for a further three years. For the first time at Euro Satori, Japan has made an appearance with a range of companies offering products that are for mainly non-combat roles. The most interesting of these on display is Mitsubishi's multi-role 8x8 armoured vehicle, which is based on the company's MCV, and it is available in troop-carrying, medical and C2 variants. In the small arms sector, the rifle manufacturers such as Colt, FN Herstal, STK and Beretta are presenting their latest assault weapons. These are all modular, lightweight, ambidextrous and available in bullpup and conventional designs. The main programme of interest in this area is a plan by the French Army to replace its existing FAMAS assault rifle at some point in the next few years. In the unmanned sector, RUAG is testing its new Vero UGV sensor system on the General Dynamics Eagle 4x4 vehicle and plans to enter production in 2016. In addition, Aeronautics has presented its Orbiter Mini UAS as well. Overall, the show is busy as ever. And despite the absence of any major contracts or orders, it was interesting to see how various industrial groups are positioning themselves in these relatively lean years, aggressively marketing their products and entering into more niche markets. We'll have to watch this space to see whether these strategies will prove successful.